Hello to viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're going to talk about metallic hydrogen. So let's dive right into it. Now first, we have to understand what exactly we are talking about here. We are talking about a basically new phase of hydrogen matter. Almost every element in periodic table generally has a fancy graph, phase diagram as we call it, meaning at certain PSI or pressure, at certain temperature, it's going to behave a bit differently, meaning it's not necessary, it's going to be like, you know, solid, liquid, gas, it may be super fluid, it may be super solid, super gas, or whatever have you. Like there are uh, options, so to say. Now in hydrogen, uh, we have not truly explored all the possibilities yet. So this is something that we are exploring now and uh, this was predicted as early as 1935 that there should be uh, basically at certain psi hydrogen should behave a bit differently basically like a metal now uh, the primary reason like primary confidence that we have that this is supposed to happen is simply because of jupiter and other gas giants like that because gas giants do not have a, a basically rocky core like how earth has it meaning earth has an iron nickel core that spins and creates the dynamo uh, dynamo effect which creates the magnetic field how the heck Jupiter has such a huge one? So that's the issue. Now, hydrogen is plenty there, like boatload of hydrogen. So in those sort of scenarios, running those simulation, we figured out like there has to be something similar to what we call metallic hydrogen. Now, unfortunately, metallic hydrogen requires ludicrously high amount of pressure, meaning it makes a fusion reactor kind of scenario. Basically, it has to be ludicrously dense in those sort of scenarios is going to be achieved now we got the mathematics but we had never physically physically even a nanogram of it uh, have built it on earth so that's what we are talking about here now it is uh, what we classify as energy carrier it's not an energy source meaning whenever you are talking about something like this you have to figure out where you are putting the energy into the system it's almost like antimatter in that regard now it's not a natural state of hydrogen that's why it's classified as energy carrier not an energy source now nature does not like the state so much that no matter what you do even if you do electrolysis of water all you're gonna get is h2 output on, from the other end and that same goes for almost every single reaction so you can never find just tada hydrogen floating around so if you want to have something like that like hydrogen directly floating around either you have to make it into a plasma or you have to compress this puppy into a point where this break uh, you know this bond breaks and it goes into a lattice structure which we call metallic hydrogen now that uh, structure lattice structure has a lot of energy that it will give off once it recombines meaning and that energy directly came from you compressing that puppy now what kind of energy we are talking about we are talking ludicrously high amount of energy that is 260 megajoules per kilogram that is 50 times tnt now be very mindful tnt is powerful but almost all fuels are more powerful than this explosive type system now you're like then why the heck we use explosive not fuel well fuel do not have the uh, you know two part component to it meaning oxygen is missing from it and no matter what you do however you want to burn it you will never have the ability to like let's say you have one liter of petrol it's not gonna uh, burn simultaneously meaning all one liter of it's gonna burn instantaneous meaning it's gonna react from the, let's say it's a liquid bottle it's gonna react from outside or from top down so that inherently slows it down that's why you can have a lot of big fireballs but you will not have that oomph that you get out of tnt and things of that nature but this does have that side effect meaning if you do the, uh, let's say made one kilogram of this puppy and it went boom it's gonna be really really powerful meaning uh, this is gonna make almost nuke level explosions now of course small nuke but it can come very close to it now energy is directly proportional to however energy you're putting into the system so do not expect this to replace you on a hydrogen car in the future if that's not going to happen because inherently the system is very inefficient and if you have electrical energy to run the compressors and things of that nature just use that electricity directly on electric cars it's much more efficient so energy have to be fed into the system for breaking down and then that energy that you put into that it will be released once it recombines now recombination in lattice structure supposed to be be very mindful i'm using this word very thoroughly supposed to be meta meaning generally things have a normal curve to it meaning as it goes uh, you know high temperature low temperature or as its phase changes but metastable states are a bit unique almost like what you have in your thermal printer if you see that uh, ink printer it fades away over time why because it's metastable not changed permanently and you can use the heat again if you want to same is happening here. basically this hump little hump is preventing this material to go down automatically now again if you want this uh, hump to be huge you will have a bit more stable meta stable state but uh, unless this puppy crosses this threshold you will not call it a complete change so hydrogen lattice is supposed to be in meta stable state meaning once you compress this puppy once you reach that point where it's like a completely metallic hydrogen it should remain as completely metallic hydrogen without requiring external forces to do so but again that part is not uh, practically proven so to say so we do not know how big this hump is basically how stable this puppy is 
Now, how did we achieve something this magical that requires Jupiter level crushing? We used what we classify as diamond anvil cell. Now, metal is really good in terms of applying a lot of pressure, but it does have the side effect. It cannot apply a lot of pressure in small spots, meaning if you take, uh, let's say, 100 gigapascals and you did like this, it's going to bend like this. Metal is going to melt. So how the heck you compensate for that? You have two huge metal plates going YOLO at each other, but you're going to apply what we call uh, almost a step up transformer in terms of pressure. You're going to put diamond. Diamond is going to be clamped in such a way that it cannot move and it has like, you know, complete rigidity. And the diamond is going to take like large surface area. You are talking about like almost a few inches to a few millimeters. And that's the critical aspect. That amplification, meaning from, it's almost like a hydraulic cylinder, how you have a, like, you know, large cylinder moving something very heavy, very little, but you have a small cylinder going something like that so it's almost like acting like a uh, what you call step up transformer but it has to be done from both sides because no metal is strong enough where you can apply like 600 gigapascal to it and it will not you know buckle quote unquote so it needs diamond from both sides now how the heck you seal it well uh, generally people try to make it as flat as possible so you cannot seal it by creating a cavity inside because if you did that if you try to create a cavity you have the issue that diamond will directly hit another diamond and one of them will shatter so generally they try to make it as polished as possible and then they use gasket now gasket is a generally specific type of metal which is gonna get compressed but act as a very good seal and because of those ludicrously high pressure nothing can escape through that um, metal seal coating and this gasket so to say now at the contact point when you're applying some gg amounts of pressure you are talking about like as high as 600 gigapascals now that's huge amount of pressure that is like so high in psi like good luck trying to figure out how many psi that is it's very bonkersly high kind of pressure now another benefit of doing it this way is that diamond are transparent to majority of electromagnetic spectrum meaning you can just look through it and these are artificial diamonds so generally they are polished to a very high standard so you can directly find uh, you know send em radiation through it now depending on your em radiation meaning it could be infrared it could be x-ray you can do a lot of testing on this system because again you cannot remove it unless you know for a fact that once i compressed it it's gonna be in metastable stable state i can remove it and just like you know examine it you have to do every testing in this condition itself so generally light is used and like this are the example that people have provided meaning you have hydrogen gas it's supposed to be basically transparent okay everything is awesome awesome 300 315 but the moment you cross that 400 threshold 412 it started to change color 427 change color changed again now it's supposed to be transparent it started to uh, basically change the color and basing on other systems and other uh, instrument system we are figuring out that it's starting to act more and more as metal now there are some limitations to it you cannot directly analyze the sample so that is the issue we are observed these changes that has been double checked and has been done two times so far so we know for a fact that hydrogen does go through some changes now exact direct testing has not been done because a it's not easy b it may go boom especially if you figure out somehow to make huge diamond anvils that can provide this kind of bonkers pressure and you did let's say compress let's say a few grams of that that's boom potential like serious boom potential is there so you have to be very mindful with that and right now what we are developing is very small like this is <laughs> micrometers like very 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 small amounts so uh, the first generation of testing of this sort of system people created that there was an issue that if you have hydrogen in that kind of con confined space it will directly diffuse through most elements what we call a uh, lattice structure it can just go through lattice structure that's why hydrogen leaks through even metal tanks so problem was that to stop that from hydrogen from diffusing into diamonds because if it diffuses it it can crack the diamond so in those sort of scenario they used alumina and that was the issue why in 2017 when this puppy was done first properly a lot of people had spec uh, you know doubts whether do you actually received it because again the whole idea with this puppy is that diamond is completely transparent but you have added alumina directly into it that created an issue where it's like are you detecting a metallic hydrogen or are you detecting alumina that you yourself have added the second time this was done there was no alumina added because they used an electron microscope kind of uh, electron level etching kind of scenario to create a donut kind of structure uh, that acts as a much better tra uh, trapping medium quote unquote almost a smooth trapping medium so it did not have the issue that hydrogen can just penetrate directly through it using this second system they have achieved much better uh, basically results and not to mention that's why they have achieved uh, uh, metallic hydrogen transition at much lower psi not much lower as in like you know 500 versus 400 but like you know few psi uh, psi i'm saying <laughs> gpa lower and that's the reason why this uh, shape is really uh, you know conductive in terms of pressure uh, management so this is diamond anvil that we have to uh, study and a lot of people are trying to replicate this puppy because so far this has been done properly two times and uh, first time they were, they wanted to like actually remove the system and 
object the sample itself but the moment uh, they were like you know what let's rerun the test because again good scientific practice the, the moment they did that it shattered so it is something that you have to understand very very thoroughly and be mindful we are talking about shattering diamonds these are big diamonds these are not something you would have to see through a microscope these are big diamonds even synthetic diamond of that size is expensive so it's not something that you can any tom dick and harry can do now what's the hype around it well the god damn hype around this is bonkers meaning uh, people are talking about like this will be a room temperature supercomputer now here's the deal if you have uh, looked around enough hype circles for long enough you know for a fact that this sort of rumor has came along way too many times and reality is there are many things that can do room temperature superconductor that's easy the hard part is doing that in one atmosphere meaning around 15 psi that's the issue again i urge you to google how many things can do room temperature super there is a one gas also that can do that but here's the deal you will you will you use that like you know a high pressure tube uh, that has that gas pressure no because a that makes a inherent conductor that is like unsafe meaning what happens if some puncture happens or some damage happens because again you are living on earth earthquake can happen tornado can happen you do not want your power cable to be inherently unsafe where it's like oops psh, power shot you do not want that so that's why having that room temperature superconductor without that other data point of what uh, psi we are talking about it's uh, basically just hype so whenever you see something like you know room temperature superconductor do not fall for it unless you have that other data point also meaning what pressure we are talking about without those two data point it does not make sense now there is little bit of hope that the meta stable state should be stable enough where you can use this as a like you know a uh, pipe that is carrying a liquid sort of situation but again how meta stable is that basically what happens if let's say there is a surge current and that surge current itself triggers the breakdown event be mindful this will make tnt look like bitch please so good luck with that so it's not going to be replacing you know mri uh, systems anytime soon and then it makes greatest rocket fuel on paper now that's true mathematically it's almost like saying antimatter makes the greatest rocket fuel but does that mean starship is going to use antimatter or uh, sls is going to use antimatter no because same thing same way in antimatter is like good luck trying to make it here even if you make it good luck trying to store it because again that meta stable state is not as stable and good luck you have only made micro nanograms of it not tons of it that you need for a rocket system and good luck trying to store that and not to mention once it releases that energy it's too goddamn high meaning it's going to melt through almost any known metal alloy composition there is nothing that can withstand that kind of temperature the only way to do that is uh, flood this puppy with a liquid hydrogen and at that point in time you are like almost having half of the complexity of a direct uh, basically hydrogen oxygen system might as well just use that which you know how that works so it is one of those things like just certain details it's like you know this will make amazing uh, you know rocket fuel no it will not it's like what we have in rocket technology right now is almost took us like you know 60 70 years to do achieve so it's really refined everything that we have in terms of rocket engine and rocket propulsion system it's really refined what we are solving is basically scaling issue basically we kind of uh, sat on our ass after the cold war ended basically that's the reality fair that's what elon musk realized it's like all rocket development stopped after uh, cold war ended nobody was like pouring big money into it he started to pour it started from scratch and magically we have a you know a re reusable rockets so same thing is happening right now we have not maxed the potential of what we have already so going into like you know metallic hydrogen and all that just again we have not even sorted out most of the situation of metallic hydrogen and now you are expecting it to make into a rocket fuel no that does make a good clickbait title but no now what we can expect in the future now this is one thing you have to understand many times in science things that we add into scientific textbook now does not make apparent sense right now it does take years in order to make sense to it because many times scientists are just people who are making tools engineers are the people who are taking that tools and making a useful product out of it so you can have a scenario where it's like somebody wrote like think of this one like this metallic hydrogen somebody utilizing mathematics and scientific knowledge of older times figured out that there's supposed to be there's supposed to be a metallic hydrogen state in 1935 so same thing is happening here we are creating uh, a new knowledge database now that will be useful in future now for what reason we do not know and that's the beauty of it that's a bit of leap of faith that you like we're going to create amazing tools tomorrow somebody is going to do something amazing with it and that has happened enough times in science that we, we know for a fact at this point in time all scientific journals and all uh, scientific institutions is like you know we do not worry too much about this like can we patent this right now we we know for a fact that it, it does take time we know for a fact we have enough historical history based data that is like you know what you are researching right now may not have any use in next 10 years but next 20 50 years it will like dude this is the most amazing technology ever so it has happened more than enough time and we are reaching a new pioneer technology right now uh, the most high technology is nanotechnology quantum technology but that does not mean that we have sorted everything everywhere else we still have not reached this high pressure physics 
system and meta states are fundamentally unknown to us so there is a lot of new things to be learned in these domains also again these are like you know pressure normal system it does not require cryogenics and all that just but still unknown to us the more we learn the more we can figure something out in the future so it's a great r d and guaranteed if somebody sorts it out properly as in like uh, what is the meta state what is the exact conduction everything all the data point Nobel prize will be guaranteed for this puppy but be very mindful the probability of you utilizing this puppy in you know your day-to-day -day life like your your mri machine or you know power company companies utilizing this puppy for uh, energy transmission is zero to no in next hundred years now again i do expect this puppy to you know become the next big thing but hundred years from now right now it's a really good uh, toolkit for our science book so i do expect a lot of people pour a lot of r d into this but in terms of usability not right now i do expect this to play a big role but not right now so this was my presentation on metallic hydrogen hopefully you have liked it learn from it in that case please hit the like button share it amongst your friends that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching